everybody and welcome. Welcome to episode 13 of the Mind and Muse podcast. This is my corner of the internet where I come to you uh, more or less every two weeks to talk to you about the crafty side of my life. I come to you from the western side of the island of Puerto Rico and I live there with my husband and my dog Snoopy and I try to get as much yarny goodness as possible into my life but well I say yarny goodness but um, I do practice some crafts that don't necessarily involve uh, the use of yarn but anyway I'm a crafty person and I have accepted that and I have also decided to come here every once in a while and share that side of my life with anybody who's interested so if you are a returning viewer thank you for coming back to my spot of the internet and wanting to come and spare us share some of your time with me and if you are a first time viewer welcome also i am your host caroline and hopefully you'll share with me the next um, 30 minutes and um entertain be entertained and uh, like what you see like what you hear me say and and enjoy what i have to share with you so today is uh october the 27th it's october the 27th just in case you're viewing this at a future date so you'll know how how long ago it's been since I filmed this. So, what have I been up to lately? Well, in a moment, I am going to be sharing with you some of the crafts that I have been um, working on during this week. Some of them are finished, some of them are just I've just started. Some of them are yet to be started, but I will share them with you. Um, and I never know if to share with you at the beginning or at the end, um, I'm not one for going into very personal aspects of my life, but I do feel that sometimes you want to have a friend to share some things with you when things are going good and probably when things are going bad also. So I will just let you know that um, one of the reasons why maybe I haven't, I didn't podcast last week, which would have been probably my due date for um, if I am to be consistent at podcasting. But I was on a short trip. I took a short trip to Boston for a wedding on my uh, husband's side of the family. And at that wedding, I met up with my son who came in from New Hampshire and my daughter, Elizabeth, who came in from Florida. So it was a lovely four days. Um, cold, cold, cold. I didn't, definitely wasn't prepared. I don't know, things are crazy all over the world, but I mean, October, I mean, sure, it's fall, but it is sort of more or less the beginning of fall, but it was like 29 degrees, but it was a lovely wedding. It was a lovely wedding, and um, my best wishes to my husband's niece for a very long and happy marriage. So uh, we had some fun over the weekends, and um, I had sent some packages that I knew uh, I was going to get charged shipping for if I um, received them on the island, but wouldn't get charged shipping if I sent them to my son's house since I was going to spend uh, two nights there. I spent, I sent some um, um, packages there, and so I received some packages. My son received me by planning a Halloween party at his house, even though it was a little bit early, and so um, we dressed up, and I'll put in some footage here to show you um some of the things that we did over the weekend. We went apple picking and pumpkin picking and we had the Halloween party and we went to the to the uh, wedding. So it was a weekend packed full of entertainment and getting together with family and friends. What I did not expect, I had to return. I was supposed to return on Monday night and to go to work on Tuesday. And what I did not expect was for our plane to leave Boston late and my husband had bought the tickets with uh, about maybe 55 minutes between flights. So my flight left late from Boston and I got stuck in the airport in Orlando. Luckily, Orlando is where Clarissa Beth lives. So I was able to rent a car and drive out to her and spend an extra day with her and just um, record a, a class for my students to take online. So it all worked out. I got back on Tuesday and ever since, I've been on my the second part of my vacation because our dog was taken to a doggy hotel because as you know if you've seen this for a while my dog bites and so I no longer take care of him I feed him because I can keep my distance 
but I won't walk him or bathe him or anything where I have to get really up close to him. So unfortunately on vacations like this, when my husband is away from home, he has to go to a doggy hotel. Um, I, even though I have, I understand it from the owner that he enjoys it a lot there because they, they have a patio where they let him run free and there are other dogs there. Um, but I have been for four days with no doggy to take care of, with no doggies barking around us, with no hubby to cook for, and so I have just been playing, doing whatever I want. And you know that what I've been doing is spending lots of time crafting. And so that's one of the reasons why I have to get this done quickly now because I am running out of vacation time and I do need to get my adulting done and get this house into ship shape order before my husband returns. So carrying on with the crafty side of my life, I'll start by sharing with you what I am wearing, which um, you can't really see because I don't know, I guess the distance and the angle from which I'm recording. I'm using the front camera today because it was easier to set up. I have to set up a lot more things when I use the back camera. So anyway, I am wearing this pendant that I prepared this morning. And I'll put a close-up picture over here for you and so that you can see what she looked like without her dress and what she looks like uh, with the crocheted dress. Um, no, I'm not going to take it off because it has a very small uh, loop at the back to catch the lobster claw in and I'll never get it in because I can't see. And so this is my witchy pendant. I can try and get a little bit closer. There you go. And she is made out of a metal cone, which is light on top of a disc, a, I believe it's it might be cardboard or a very thin wood desk. And so she has got a head and then here's her little neck. And underneath she is made up of these tubular tiger eye beads all through her body. And then these were earrings that I had purchased some year for Halloween, Halloween earrings. And so I attached them on wire to create her two legs and crocheted up her dress as quick as I could because I wanted to get this podcast done and so I want to make her another one because I realize now that it was a very bad choice of colors if I wanted to actually share her here with you but I will promise to well I don't know if that promise is necessary I don't know if anybody's interested but just in case I will put up a little picture of the um, dressed and undressed a little pendant so if you are into that type of thing then you'll have some idea of how I put it together so yeah that's my crafty little Halloween pendant for this week so going on to yarny things well it's a little bit yarny she I, I, I made a little dress for her so she's a little bit yarny but going on to more yarny things some of which you have already seen and other podcasts some of which I'm going to share for the first time I will mention I'll just go in order. One of the things we have talked a lot about the la the last over the last couple of weeks and is coming to an end next week is the 2018 Sock Along, the Sock Cal that was hosted by Crochet Luna of by well, Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast and Faye of the Crochet Circle podcast and the finished objects thread. If you're down to that stage where your objects or socks are finished and you're ready to put them into um, a thread to, to um, try out your chance for a prize. The f main finished objects thread is in Craftinoon Treats, Catherine of Craftinoon Treats um, Ravelry thread, Ravelry group, and um, Clarissa Beth of the Crochet Cakes Ravelry uh, of the Crochet Cakes podcast has a thread in her Ravelry group for those of you who wanted to try out my uh, sweet sock pattern and complete a sock you may publish in the chatter thread and I don't know if she's going to put up a finished objects thread or if it's going to just stay as chatter and we'll choose from the chatter there aren't many of you um, as I know it that have communicated with us to let us know that you're uh, making the pattern so um, you have 
a much greater chance of winning a prize because there are maybe three or four of us only in this group, whereas in the larger group on Craft on Catherine's uh, Ravelry group, there are a lot of people. The chatter thread in the Crochet Lunar podcast Ravelry group has been very active, and so there must be... I haven't gone to the finished objects thread on Catherine's uh, Ravelry group, but I imagine it's got to be overflowing, full of, of socks, because a lot of people were enthusiastic about the idea. A lot of people are doing it for the first time. A lot of people are happy with their finished objects, and a lot of people have um, accepted or or kind of like come about to the idea for the first time that it might be possible to make a crochet sock that isn't all that bad. And so um, let me share with you the socks I have been working on. I'm going to share the second sock that I began that I have been working up with this yarn, which is a yarn from uh, Catherine of Craft and Noon Treats. It's one of her eco-printed um, yarns. It was eco-printed with birch, goldenrod, and fennel that gave it the the smell, the, the aroma, and the tea leaves that were placed on top of um, the yarn and kind of rolled up with them were to create an eco, eco printing. And so that's what we got. That's what it looks like and when it's caked up. It is fingering a uh, suck yarn, so it is 85% ethically produced Paul Worth and 15% nylon. And the um, sock has been living in this bag, which is the bag that um, Clarissa Beth, can you forget your children's name? <laughs> Clarissa Beth of the Crochet Cakes podcast had uh, made so that we could share with those of you interested in making um, in having this more or less as you didn't have to make my sock to buy this but you could have just a sock to remember the sock along of 2018 especially if it was the first time you were participating she created the bag and we purchased the the pins are by Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast and they are, can be included if you would like with one of the bags and well there are several options there and there are still a couple of them left if you're interested there's still a week left and in a week you can always it's always possible to crochet a sock i don't know so much about knitting some people have made knitting socks in three or four hours but for me that can never happen a sock a crochet sock yeah maybe but this one is going very slow because i am double dipping in the well that was my intention to double dip in the strictly 2018 sock cow. And so this is what I have so far. Now I said at the beginning, I can't watch strictly here. So what I do is I put it on YouTube and I loop it and I watch the same thing over and over again so I can get some extra crochet time, uh, maybe about an hour whenever I can. So basically it's been about an hour, a week, an hour per week that I have been working on it and so Actually, I did a bit more. I had already completed the the heel. I had already completed the heel yesterday, but it <laughs> I wanted to make I wanted to make the heel and the contrasting yellow, and I forgot. And when I added in my yellow, it turned out that only half of my heel was yellow, and I didn't like it so much, so I ripped it back. And so I will continue to work on it today. Once the, um, the episode for Strictly of this week is posted to YouTube and I'll probably be able to finish that heel on this side tonight. The Strictly 2018 runs until January. It's a very long. There will be a prize pulled, I think, after today, I do believe, because there is going to be a Halloween episode prize. I don't know if you have to have the socks finished or you just have to have participate in the chatter. I'm not too sure about that, but you can find all those details on the Little Drops of Wonderful Ravelry group. That's Alley of Little Drops of Wonderful. And um, so if you didn't get your sock finished for the 2018 Sock Cal um, by Faye of the Crochet Circle, you can still finish your sock and enter it into the Strictly Sock Along if if you can somehow connect your sock to Strictly. 
of 2018. So um, that is going until January, so there's lots of time to make more than one pair of socks there. Those are my socks. And let's see, second on my list of, what am I doing? I'm doing whips. So let me share some whips with you. Um, one whip that I hadn't started last week was the my whip that's living in this bag. This was a precious bag to me made by my daughter. It's my Halloween bag. Keep rosemary by your garden gate and plant roses and lavender for luck. And this is um, a quote taken from Practical Magic, which is my favorite Halloween movie. And so in the bag is living my second add-along sweater. First add-along, I showed with you the finished, finally the finished product last week. And it took a trip with me to New Hampshire. And I found that the bamboo, I used bamboo with 25% wool, really stretches a lot. It wasn't such a bad thing in the sense of the length of the sweater because my it stretches and so it's pretty long. You could probably wear it with leggings by now. But it did bug me a bit because because of the, the way the, the uh, sweater is constructed, uh, as you fold your arms and move them, there was a lot of stretching around the elbows. Um, I did wash it and dry it and, and it did um, go back to the normal size, but um, I guess while you were wearing it, it didn't really look very attractive because it was very baggy around the elbows. So I started, a, I had already started a second one before that, but I had said that I wanted in the last podcast to make it a, a, a more wool, or uh, something with more wool content. So here it is, I started my add along in this and it was just a lot a color latte from uh Peyton's. so it wasn't an expensive yarn it's nothing gourmet or nothing of uh, fine or delicate it's just Peyton's classic wool and this is the color latte and so to spice it up a bit i am joining it with this colorway which is uh molly molly weasley and it was dyed up by Kayleen of the Little Bean Loves Yarn shop, yarn dyeing shop. And so I am doubling it up with that. And so this is actually the back. You start out by doing the back. So let me see. Uh, why am I, I don't know. Maybe because I want to. Let me just show you what it looks like in case you're interested in making it so you'll have an idea. You start with the backs, but I'm going to put it on this way so you can see it. Because basically the back and the front are very similar um, with the short row shaping. But I just wanted to show you how it, it works up. It works up this way. And so I have half of my arm done also. You can see a little bit of the short rows going on up there at the top. And so this is going to be a nice fit. Even though this is DK and the pattern is written for DK, and I am doubling it up with uh, fingering weight, so I think by now this is probably a worsted weight, which is part of the reason why I'm seeing that the um, arm is a bit longer than it was for the previous one, although, you know, it's got, it's going to come under here, and it's going to lose some of its lengths, so yeah, can't, it's going to, right, but I think, as far as I can tell, this is going to be a great fit, and boy, is it boiling hot it's boiling hot but I'll say one good thing about marling together the um, that look pretty the Molly Weasley colorway is because this Peyton's is a very scratchy and it's a very sturdy but yeah it's it's a tough uh, wool and um, the merino and in the Molly colorway, really softens it up. It's gonna be very stretchy, and I am hoping to get it done. It took me about a month to get the other version done. This was, um, 
a test that I did for uh, Adidas Designs before, uh, when she was uh, getting ready to publish this. And so um, I usually don't, well, up to now, I haven't very frequently made a second version of anything, but I just like the sweater so much. And I uh, that yellow sweater that you saw me wearing last week went to Clarissa Beth. So I wanted to make another one for me and I wanted it to be wool and I want to take it with me to my trip to New Hampshire in November because I'll be returning to New Hampshire for Thanksgiving to spend Thanksgiving with my children and so I want to take something very warm. My son said that the the heating didn't go on until the 1st of November but luckily I'll be going down the 21st so by then either the heater will be on or there'll be a fire in the fireplace and maybe I really won't need this very thick sweater but we'll see. I, I'm hoping to get it done, done anyway but I have to start getting back to work on it because I stopped working on it before I left for this trip because it was a big project and I didn't want to take it with me so I worked on it as much as I could before I left and now I while I was there I was working on the smaller things the socks and all that and so now I'm going to get back to working on it. So that's my second add-along sweater and hopefully it will be a finished object probably not the next podcast but soon before I go to my my trip to New Hampshire. Okay, continuing then with whips, um, let me see what's in this bag over here. This was a bag that I also collected on this trip to um, my weekend at, in Boston. This was made by Clarissa Beth of my daughter. And if you didn't know, she has a shop called Dainty by Crochet Cakes on Etsy where she sells and makes and sells project bags. and. While she was here, we had been in the habit of exchanging Halloween bags for each other. And um, so she made me this one. This was a fabric that I liked a lot. She had purchased it to make, uh, I believe it was a skirt. And so with the leftovers, she made me this project bag. And so we were always kidding around that all my children were here. I was there with um, my son and Clarissa Beth and let me see if there's a better picture of my oldest daughter somewhere around here. <laughs> that might be me. It looks like a picture that Faye made for Clarissa Beth and that Clarissa still has on her wall. But yeah, it's a, uh, I have fun with those characters every, every time they, they produce um, their new uh, fabric every year. So in this bag, I believe I have something that you haven't seen before. It is a pair of, actually it's going to be a pair of boots. Oh, the pattern should be somewhere because I know I did print it out. And so these are boots by Jess of the Make and Do crew make and do crew yep um um she has several boot patterns i can't remember the name of this one these are not the log cabin ones but they are these are an imitation of the ugg boots they're meant to be once they're produced the ugg boots i'll put up a picture here to share with you or a um a link so that you can see them for yourselves i am making these in burnett yarn Rowing, and this I know it's got to have some wool in it let's see no 80% acrylic and 20% wool nice and fluffy fluffy and the idea with these is that these boots must come up pretty high like halfway up your calf and what I noticed with these that I hadn't noticed before what you do with these is this is a free pattern you can purchase a, a, a pattern without ads if you would like to on Etsy or on one of her sites where she publishes her, her, um, her pattern. She has links to all that on her blog. What happens is that you begin by taking a flip-flop. Well, she always uses flip-flop. You could probably use some other type of sole. But you begin by taking a flip-flop and we prepare the flip-flop by, she includes, you can't really see too well because this is black, but she includes a ruler with her pattern 
that you use to mark little holes around here and in each of those holes you crochet single crochet a base yarn into it that's where I'm going to connect that's where I'm going to connect to then begin crocheting my boot in this case and she uses more or less the same the same preparation for sandals and she has um, espadrilles and she has also um, like moccasins and things like that she's got uh, several patterns that are, are for feet and so usually when you do this you buy a flip-flop that is one size smaller than the size you normally use so I normally prepare my shoes if you've been for here for a while or you follow me on Instagram you're seeing some of the uh, shoes that I have prepared I usually make them with size 7 because I'm a size 8 but the boot is made trying to use as tight a gauge as possible as if you were doing an amigurimi because of the fact that it's a boot that you could actually wear outdoors and so I find it too tight to wear actually to wear a sock inside and to be able to wear it so I am going to redo this I have the same black flip flops in size 8 and so I am going to redo them and when I redo them then I'll just disconnect from here and you know continue crocheting the other boot when I get back to my flip-flop it's not a waste because since this is done separately I'll just save the flip-flop to make a different pair of shoes and they'll already be prepared and made up this takes a is rather time-consuming to do this preparation so I'll already have them uh, prepared for another another pair of shoes it won't it won't go to waste but I do want to redo them because even though crochet does stretch I find they're too tight for what I want them to be which are boots that I can wear with socks inside of them and even if I don't wear them outside but I would like to wear them comfortably in the house so these are going to be high boots like up to like the UGG boots where they're like maybe not halfway but maybe five or six inches above your ankle and so what I did while I was uh, in the States I purchased these adjustable wool soles see how they're adjustable here and I'm going to be able to cut them off to my size and they will go on the inside if you've seen what I have made before when I make shoes I normally put a sole on my shoe and I don't just leave the flip-flop I usually will uh, glue a sole to the shoe so I will glue this to my shoe and that's another reason why I want to go up to the size 8 because I need more room because of the sole but it's a wool sole I am preparing for my stay at my son's house and it comes to these are two I bought these off of Amazon W-O-B-A-O-S can you see that? in case you would want to purchase them and in addition to that once these are crocheted up once the boots are crocheted up she puts a lining on the inside at the top like a furry lining so that they will look like the more like the Uggs and so what I did was I purchased this yarn fur yarn that if you are active on Instagram or probably any of the social media it's just that I'm most active on Instagram you will see a lot of the knitters are knitting up this yarn to create the brims of their hats and so I still don't know how they do it because I would find it very difficult to see my stitches but they say they do it with a large needle the suggestion here is from six to eight knitting needles doesn't say anything about crochet so I guess nobody has um, not, they don't expect a lot of people to crochet with it but anyway I am going to crochet with it and I am going to put it on the inside of the boot it doesn't go all the way on the inside it just goes around the, the top it's like a brim around the top and so I thought that would just make hers and now I've got fur and hair all over my lip gloss but well just make sure it's in a white like a cream colored and I purchased that one to see how it goes so that's going to be my adventure with um it's been a while since I've made any type of footwear in crochet and it, that's another one of the projects that I like to do and so um that's a whip that you haven't I had started it before but I hadn't shared it and so 
I shared it now, but I mean, I'll probably be back. They don't take really that long to do. So I'll frog them and, and get going on the next one and I'll show them to the next time. So what do I have left to share with you? I think there's only one thing left to share. One whip left to share. And I'm not, I wasn't sure if I should share it with you because of the fact that um, I shared it with you the last time, but it is my blanket. I just wanted you to know that I was able to get more of this white yarn. And um, actually Jess of the Make and Do crew had offered to send me some if I couldn't find it, but I was able to find it. And so things are a lot easier now because I am past the halfway point. So right now I'm at the point where, uh, well, you can't see the here, but this, this, what he has around his neck is in green. And so that is the point where I'm coming up at right now. So I'm about to start incorporating that green. And so things became easier because at this point, I only have two colors, the gray and the white. And so it's easier to show because I don't have all of these um, yarn bobbins attached. But it's not much different from the way it was, right? Because I didn't take this on my trip because it was so big. And since I'm back, I was uh, had only been able to add on to it a couple of rows. So. But I just wanted to let you know that I did get that yarn and I am gonna continue with this. And I do think that I will be finished soon because, well, it's got border and stuff like that. I'm about on row 72. And even though it does have, uh, it says here 123 rows, and you can say, oh wow, but you've got still uh, almost 50 rows to go. Exactly 50 rows to go. But the thing is that now I am on the decrease, and so I didn't have this part here the last time. I have begun decreasing, so now I'm creating this upper edge. As I decrease, I am creating the upper edge and the lower edge. See? So every time my row is getting shorter, shorter by one, and that you might not think so, but that is a significant advantage to uh, increasing the, the rate at which you can crochet. Now, instead of doing two rows a day, I can do three or four and uh, it is fine. And I, you know, because of the fact that they are shorter rows now and there are less color changes. So that has me happy still. Okay, I got the, I'm still worried, I am still worried that I won't have enough white because I only purchased one more. Jess, um, we wrote back and forth and she told me that she believed that I would only need one more and but I would use it up completely. And so I used one, I used two complete ones for the whole body, right? And the tail and all this like up to here. Let's say all this. I used two complete ones for all this part down here. And so what I am left with, and probably I'm probably doing it wrong, yeah. I used two complete ones for all this down here. And so what I have left to work the, is that much of the white. Being that this took two, I'm hoping, but I'm not sure yet, I'm not convinced yet, that um, I won't be convinced until I get it done, that that will be enough. But hopefully it will be. So, those are the projects that I've been working on. I have one finished object in addition to my little um, dangle here that I wanted to share with you. I have one finished object, which I have misplaced. Okay. My finished object is the scarf that I have been working on. After I worked on my Sherlock scarf, I... I wanted to try and recreate it in crochet. And so I used Peruvian um, Highland wool, 100%. And I used one color, basically this magenta, with two different types of stitches. This was the moss stitch that I used a H hook for, I believe H is five. And this is just simply single crochet in the front and back loop alternating and I use their uh, size six and uh, eye hook because of the fact that 
um, it was pulling in. You can still tell that it needs a good blocking. Because right? some of those edges where I was doing, some of them didn't pull in, but others did. And so I want to get them all the same width, although I don't think it, it matters so much for a scarf because this is really heavy, so I'm going to be wearing it Let's say, maybe like this. So nobody's going to notice that the edges are not straight. But it's like, you know, a personal thing that you, you want that to be. So this can come around and it's long enough to go through that. Or I could wear it the same way I wore my Sherlock one, which is to fold it in half around the neck and put the edges through the loop. And it is very roomy. There's enough room to do that. Very. Let me raise this. Oh, let me raise this so you can see the gorgeous edging. <laughs> Took me a while to figure out what edging I wanted to put on it. And for some reason, I like ruffles. I've always liked ruffles. My daughters have never liked ruffles, so they don't like me to wear ruffles. But I like ruffles. So I put ruffles on it. And the contrasting color that I use is also Peruvian Highland wool. And I did a crab stitch around the edge. This is just a ruffle. I'm creating by doing, I think it's three double crochets in each stitch the first time around, and then one double crochet all the way through for as long as you want to make it. And so I wanted to make it pretty long. And I also thought, well, yeah, this could probably be, if you're, you don't have a hat at some point, this could probably double up as a hat and a scarf, right? There you go. And so if you don't have a hat and you need to improvise, there you go. And it's you can even have your ponytail sticking out. And so there, I'm all set to go to New Hampshire this winter <laughs> or wherever the winter may take me. And so, I enjoyed making that. It worked up in no time. If you remember my knitted version, uh, my knitted version, it's static now because of the, the wool. <laughs> now I have um, frizz. Okay. The, uh, <laughs> the knitted version, you'll remember, it took me months to make because I am a slow knitter, even though this was a very big yarn on very big hook, on a very big needles. But um, this one took up no time. It, it took up no time, and I really... I really like it and, and I know it's going to be super warm. So that's my finished object. That was a, there was no pattern there, just something that I, um, I wanted to imitate that scarf that I had knit up and I so that I wanted to use two different stitches that would give it lots of texture, but two different types of texture. And, um, so I went for these two, I guess you could use, uh, probably bobbles would look really pretty as an alternative and so yeah who knows I've got uh, lots of this yarn left away. I kind of feel like I should add some big old flowers and lots of things I follow a um, a lady on Instagram Polly V is that her name or I know her first name is Emily but um, she's a crocheter who crochets these marvelous shawls and they are all in very in thick yarn and they are all full of flowers and different types of decorations. I believe she crocheted a shawl that had um, the buildings of Amsterdam, the background scenery of Amsterdam. She is just a marvelous maker and so I love her page because it's so beautiful. And, but when I saw these colors, they reminded me of her. And since I have this wool in, in several colors, I have it in a mustard yellow and I have it in like a teal color. I figured, oh, maybe I should just be adding lots of flowers to this and, and create a very uh, daunting uh, scarf. Uh, I don't know that I would. I probably would wear it. I probably would wear it. I, I can pull that off. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. But it's just the thing is, well, you have to put it on top of the coat. You can't hide it underneath because... Go and see it. Go and check it out. I'll put the link down here at the bottom of the screen and go check her out. It is a lovely page just to look at, even if you would never dream of making the things that she makes. So, yes, that's a, um, 
Clarissa has shared that with me. And so um, I'm very happy to, every time I'm down, I go and check out that page for a while and just brings my spirits up. So the only other thing I wanted to share with you is a, um, a 13 days of Halloween, uh, we can't call it admin, but a calendar sort of kit that I purchased from Little Bean Loves a while back. And it came in um, before I left to my trip. And so she included here a, a nice uh, letter for us because it came in early and we the countdown started the 19th of October. So it came in early and um, here she says, uh, just wrote us a small note so that to try and keep us <laughs> from opening all the packages beforehand and so that we would all do it uh, one package a day. And so um, I did realize that though I am, I say, and Clusabeth and I both say, that we love Halloween and that it is one of our favorite holidays, I do, I did realize from participating in this that we all enjoy holidays in a different way. And so, uh, the movies that she uses to create her yarn are not movies that I would watch because I get scared very easily, very I get impressed very easily and won't be able to sleep. But it was fun opening up um, the packages and seeing the yarn. And I'll include a picture here of um, the yarns that have been opened so far because I don't want to do that now. This was the one from yesterday, I believe. They come in these little packages. And this was the one from yesterday. I guess my lighting is not too good. Um, the iconic Freddy movie. But, um, yeah, I would never watch that. But I do love the yarn, and I'm thinking about making myself a pair of Sega socks with this. They, I love it. I love the combination. It's really cute. And it looks very Halloween to me also. Today is the 27th. And since I have them all thrown in here, I can't find it right now, so I won't take up any more of your time. But I'll put up a um, an insert here so you can see in case she ever does this again in your interest, I know a lot of time and effort went into it. It was a little costly, I, I, won't, I won't lie. I didn't buy it. I, I was gifted it by my children. I requested the gift from my children and they accepted. But um, it was a beautiful package. It's a beautiful package. In the package, uh, in addition to the yarn to get us started off, she included this tote bag. Find joy in the little stitches of life, no matter how many you drop. And she included some of her own soap that she makes for uh, unscented wool wash soap. And she has a sister-in-law who's a graphic designer. And she paired up with her sister-in-law. And her sister-in-law made three... Um, illustrations. Her sister-in-law is Maura, Maura O'Connor, and she is a talented illustrated artist. And, oh, she's not her sister-in-law yet. She will be her sister-in-law, who's her future sister-in-law. And so, this one was my favorite. <laughs> I would never be doing that. I wish she had said, I'm crocheting. I wish there would have been an alternative to say, I'm crocheting. But that would have been something that I would have liked. Okay. And so, uh, that was something interesting that you don't see a lot. I don't know if she'll ever do it again, because I know that a lot of work went into that. But um, it was, uh, it's been fun. It hasn't finished yet. 
There are still hmm, maybe five days left to it, but it was it was a hefty um, gift. It, there was a lot of things in it, and so I am very pleased to have shared that with Kayleen and to be able to share it here with you too. And that's all I'm going to share with you for today. So let me thank you for joining me. If um, you have not yet subscribed, you can do so by hitting the subscribe button below and also by hitting the notifications bell so that when I do upload, you can get a email or notification. Um, I have noticed that my views have been going down, down, down. I, I don't know if I have um, the uh, YouTube algorithm to thank for that or if I'm just boring you guys to death. Um, with what I make, but, um, well, until I find a reason for it, I guess the option is to just publish more, which is what a lot of people say when you start seeing that you're not getting views or your views have gone down significantly, then maybe it's time to start publishing more because of all of the, the, the amount of up loads that you make to YouTube, how frequently people interact with you and how frequently you interact with the community as a part to do in the algorithm somehow. So uh, I don't know if it's all that, but if you're interested in receiving a notification, hit that notification button. If you have liked what I've shared with you today, hit the like button. And if you know someone out there who might be interested in watching this podcast, please, please feel free to share my link with them also. Um, thanks for joining me. There are still some blog hops up. I believe there's one blog hop left that was published today. So if you're interested in overcoming your fear of heels, then you could go and check out that blog post. And um, by next week, our cow will be over. So the next time that I get back to you, I will be naming a winner. So come back please in a couple of weeks and I will share with you some more fun. In the meantime, I'm going to share with you some of the pictures from our Halloween masquerade party at my son's house. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you. Happy crafting. Hey everybody. This is the day after. <laughs> How are you feeling this morning? I feel awake and <laughs> refreshed. You have a nice sleep? I did. After, you know, I got warm because it was freezing. Well, I haven't gotten warm since. <laughs> I haven't known what warmth is since I got here, so I don't know. But I am wearing today my Blur's sweater, and Clarissa is wearing... Um, I actually don't remember the name of this. It was an adaptation from the Adult Crochet Sweater by Bob Wilson 123, and I made it using two hanks of Craft Room Treats yarn, every last little bit of it. So and we're all I've got crocheted some... up? <laughs> it's like... Here you can't really see, but there's ribbing in um, Cascade Heritage. So we're all crocheted up today and um, Not my out to see another pumpkin patch and to do some apple, apple and picking. pumpkin picking. And so we'll get back to you and have some video on that later on. Bye bye. Nice video, dear. <laughs> okay, now I'll go bomb my picture. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold. Did you call that a Some of us were a little bit more daring. And we got up on the ladders and tried to pick ourselves some apples.